20 years ago, a prisoner named the Golden Lion Shiki escapes from impel down by cutting off his own legs. When Magellan and some guards went to his cage, they were shocked that he had cut off his legs. Going forward in time, a large submarine with lots of people inside is seen. A worker announces Shiki has called, with the people appearing shocked. Cordo calls Shiki back and talks to him. At the same time, Luffy, Usopp, Chopper, and Brook were fishing and could not catch anything. Sanji told them that they shouldn't have had a banquet before arriving at the next island. Suddenly, Brook's fishing rod started to shake. At that same time, Frankie noticed a large beetle coming at the Thousand Sunny. As Brook caught the fish, the large beetle went right past them. The large beetle then came back and ate the large fish. Then a girl named Yoko looked at the pirate ship Thousand Sunny. She told Boss, the large beetle's name, to kill the Straw Hat Pirates. Boss then headed towards the ship, and Frankie attacks it. However, his attack did not work. Luffy then went to the top of the sail and battled Boss. Suddenly, Boss inhaled and exhaled fire, very similar to Frankie's fresh fire attack. Luffy, who was fine, rides Boss. Boss went down to the lawn deck and picked up Usopp. Zoro and Sanji grabbed Boss's legs and headed to an unknown island, where Yoko was. Boss got his nose stuck on the cliff, while the East Blue team except Nami went on ground. Then Yoko bit Luffy until Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp came up and people came out of the entrance of the cave. Yoko told them that they are pirates, and the people bowed before them, until an old man came out saying they are the Straw Hat Pirates. The people were surprised, showing them into a maze-like cave. As they went to the back of the island, they found a town. The buildings were all based upon the buildings in East Blue, and the islanders told them that everyone living there was from the East Blue. The name of the island was then revealed to be Kanzern Island, also known as Little East Blue. The giant windmill reminded Luffy of the one in Fusha Village the training hall was for people who came from Zoro's hometown, Shimatsuki Village Bariti, where Sanji was raised and the most famous girl in town, Luigia, lives in a mansion that reminds Usopp of Kaya. Back in the sunny, Chopper worried about the team. Nami predicted that they will call them soon. Robin and Frankie thinks if Boss joins the crew, they'll have to get an insect cage. Just after that, Usopp called Nami. Usopp told Nami to come to the back of the island, because the people wanted her to come. He hangs up and Nami goes on Shiro Mokuba Ai to go to the island. After a while, Kordo and his brother, with some men, are going to Kanzern Island to capture Boss because it escaped from Shiki. Nami rides the Shiro Mokuba Ai to a cave where members of the Oranami fan club introduce themselves. As they show Nami the inside of the island, they flirt with her. The rest of the crew are looking at the different places of the town that resemble their home towns. Luffy rides on a windmill as the old man tells him that he should be familiar with them because he's from Fusha Village. Luffy replies that he is, but they do not have one that big. Zoro went to the training hall identical to the one from Shimatsuki Village. He sees the dummies and remembers the past when Quina was practicing and battling with him when they were younger. Then, a teacher along with his students come out. As they see Zoro, the teacher tells his students to battle him, thinking that Zoro wants to battle them. But a man stops them and says that he is pirate hunter Zoro San. The students and teacher want autographs from him. Yoko, who was spying on them, gets mad. Going to Usopp, there is a flashback of him telling Kaya about a large goldfish at the South Pole when he was five years old. He told her that he was on the goldfish's humongous poop that he thought was solid ground. After the flashback ends, he is amazed by the mansion and shocked at how thin it is. The man told him that Luigi used to live in a mansion like this. Usopp states that it wasn't like this. Then the door opens and Usopp stares at a girl sitting on a chair. At first he thinks she is Kaya, but realized he was wrong when he saw an old lady with purple hair. We then see the barity where Sanji and a cook are in. As the cook prepares food, he asks if Sanji is a Straw Hat member, and learns that Sanji was a cook on the original barity. The cook tells Sanji that he loved Zeph's food and tried to steal ideas when it opened. After both go downstairs to the dining area, Sanji is given a meal that looks and to his amazement tastes like one made by Zeph. It triggers a flashback where Sanji tries to learn how to cook by watching Zeph prepare food. As Sanji tastes it, he becomes excited while Zeph looks back at him and smiles. Sanji then runs out, crying, because he knows how Zeph made the dish. Back to the present. Sanji tells the cook that his dish tastes even better than Zeph's, which causes the cook to cry in joy. Yoko spies on them, still angry that the people are enjoying the presence of the pirates. Asapi is shocked by the tiny size of the old lady. She appears to be mad at him and then asks Usopp if he is from Syrup Village, to which he replies yes. She also knows that he is the son of Yasop. Then Usopp asks if she really lived in a mansion there. The old lady then chokes us upon the ground and tells him that it is everyone's dream to live there. She also wanted to live there when she was a kid and made it true when she came to Little East Blue. Yoko spies on them as well and is still angry. 
Going back with Nami, the kids show her a naked statue of herself based off of her bounty poster. Because it is naked, it was decided by the consensus. Then Nami hits them on the head. Yoko with a tired boss is angry at the crew. Yoko is then depressed and boss tickles her. Yoko then laughs and tells him to stop. Going back to the submarine, the Amigo pirates with their submarine goes up the surface in groups. Cordo and his comrades go up to the submarine and tells them to capture boss because he took off from Shiki's hideout. Cordo's brother Largo is asleep or is having a siesta. Cordo wants to beat him up but one of his comrades said not to punch him or his comrades will die. Then they continue off without him. We go back to Sunny Go and Frankie is done building an insect cage for boss. Miko Robin, Chopper and Brooke tell Frankie he is good at building. Chopper notes that they are ready for boss. Going back to the town, there is a feast. The old man notes that it is a welcoming party for the crew. Then the crew eats meat and the others drink sake. Yoko then goes to the cave when Nami comes out. Nami told them that they said they were almost there but made her walk for hours. Then they told her that they wanted to show her the full extent of the island. Yoko then stops by Nami asking her that she is a pirate. She tells her that women as pirates are crazy. Then going to the flashback when Luffy first met Nami saying that he wants her to join the crew, but Nami refuses. Then they told Yoko saying that she can't tell Nami-sama like that. Then she bites him on the head. She runs and Nami told her to stop. Then they told Nami that her father was killed by pirates. Going back to the festival, when suddenly there was a series of chain gun shots, destroying most of the buildings, the Amigo pirates showed themselves with guns, telling the citizens that they want boss. Yoko then comes out to see what's happening. The cook then sees a piece of wood of the Barity sign broken in front of him, dropping his pan. Depressed, he goes after Kordo but was defeated easily. Sanji helps the cook and the old man saying that he represents the island habitats. Kordo then asks where is the beetle. The old man replies that you cannot have him and says that you can have everything on the island. Kordo replies that he does want everything the money, food and the beetle as well. Luffy comes and said he could not eat another bite. Kordo then asks him who he is and what is he doing. Luffy then turns to Kordo, demanding him to go home. Kordo asks why and because boss does not want to join a pirate crew. Kordo gets mad and says he does not want the beetle to join them but to capture him. Kordo then shoots cannon bullets at Luffy but they were deflected easily. Kordo is surprised that he is a devil fruit user. Luffy then uses Gomu Gomu no whip to attack Kordo. Luffy calls Zoro and Sanji to help him fight the other ones. Luffy tells Kordo that he is going to fight him tomorrow. After that, a net came out of nowhere that captures Luffy. For much danger, the net had spikes in them. It was revealed to be Largo, who has eaten an unknown devil fruit. Argo reveals that he has eaten the Amiami no Mai, which gives him the ability to create nets from his body. Zoro and Sanji try to attack Largo, however, he manages to capture both of them with his powers, leaving the three main fighters of the Straw Hats trapped. Yoko desperately dashes towards Kordo to attack him with a bamboo sword, and suddenly Boss appears and starts attacking the Amigo pirates. Largo then eats a torch and creates a flaming net that stops the giant beetle in midair. Meanwhile, the other Amigo pirates all shoot him with their guns, leaving him on the floor. Yoko approaches him and asks him he if he's okay. He starts to get up again and flies towards the Amigo pirates in order to let them take him, so the village would be spared. Various flashbacks of Boss and Yoko play. Largo creates a large iron net for Boss and he prepares to go into it however Luffy punches him away and says that he will not let him go with the Amigo pirates and that they have not yet had their battle. The villagers then realize that permitting Boss to sacrifice himself for the village was wrong and gather to start battling the Amigo pirates. Boss's skin suddenly starts to shed, and he gets up with a new color and size. He then emits fire to free Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji from the nets however he starts to fall, since it was too soon for his skin to shed and for his transformation. Largo keeps him from falling using his nets and says he feels bad for the failed transformation and for the outcome of the situation. However, Luffy says that it is not over yet, and that they will not let the beetle's last breath be in vain, while they prepare for battle. After escaping from the net, Luffy knocks Largo far away and goes off to fight him. Nami pretends to evacuate the villagers but takes them through other tunnels to surprise the Amigo pirates while they are fighting Zoro and Sanji. Luffy fights Largo but becomes trapped when he turns his entire body into a net. Luffy uses Gear 3rd to inflate and break out of the net before defeating Largo with Gigant Pistol, destroying his ship in the process. Boss saves Luffy from falling into the sea and then starts fighting him in a rematch that lasts for hours. Yoko and Nami discuss their respective pasts. Before Nami brings the straw hats together and sets sail from the island, it is revealed that Boss was a specially created insect that had escaped from Shiki, and that he plans on using an army of similar creatures to wage war on the world. The story begins at Marine Headquarters, where Vice Admiral Garp and Fleet Admiral Sengoku witness Shiki's ship floating in the sky overhead. Shiki uses a power to lift all the Marine vessels into the sky. 
then drops them before departing, declaring that this is a warning. Next, Luffy is seen, currently on an island floating in the sky, and ends up being chased by a crocodile-like monster. This monster is overcome by another, which in turn battles another several times while Luffy watches until he finally briefly battles and defeats the final victor, a bear-like creature, using Gear 3. It is revealed that the various members of the Straw Hats are separated around the floating island, Sanji with Usopp, Zoro with Chopper, and finally Robin, Frankie, and Brooke together, who are all encountering similar monstrous animals. The Straw Hat pirates meet Shiki. Nami, meanwhile, is first shown swimming in a large swimming pool in Shiki's mansion. Shiki and his henchmen enter, where it is revealed that she has been taken to this place against her will and the scene flashes back to a week earlier. On board the Thousand Sunny, the Straw Hats read news of attacks on East Blue. Luffy says they will return to East Blue to protect it when Shiki's ship appears overhead. Nami feels the air pressure changing and warns of a coming storm. Luffy calls out to Shiki's ship, attempting to warn them, gaining Shiki's attention. Shiki sends down a tone dial to record the warning. His own navigators initially disagree that a storm is approaching, but it does indeed appear, and with Nami's direction, both ships successfully escape it. Afterwards, Shiki shoots his navigator for his incompetence and comes down to the sunny to meet Nami. There he reveals he has a devil fruit power to make any inanimate object he touches ignore gravity and float. After learning it was Nami that delivered the warning and that they are headed to East Blue, Shiki offers to take them there and uses his power on Sunny. Together the two ships travel to Merville, the floating island seen before where Shiki suddenly kidnaps Nami. The others try to rescue her, but by controlling the thousand Sunny using his power, he escapes them, as well as scattering them among the fragments of the island. Back in the present, Shiki asks Nami to become his navigator, but she refuses. Dr. Indigo appears with an evolved creature, a duck peacock-like bird that can produce electricity to shock its enemies. After being shocked by it, Shiki tosses it aside. It is explained that a plant here, called IQ, can cause animals to evolve very rapidly, making them very strong. Dr. Indigo reveals he enhanced the drug, dubbing it sick which Shiki has used on the island's animals, causing them to mutate to large proportions, as well as increase their intellect and aggression. Nami protects the bird, and the bird is left with her as Shiki and his men leave. Elsewhere, Sanji and Usopp fight off various animals while Sanji searches for Robin and Nami, eventually falling from one island fragment to another before ending up in a lake just next to a village. Meanwhile, Zoro and Chopper rescue a young girl, Xiao, and are led to her village. Along the way, they learn the large poisonous plants, called Daft Green, around the village emit a stink so powerful that the animals stay away. However, long-term exposure to the plants is poisonous to humans, and Xiao's grandmother has become ill from it. Xiao was outside looking for the cure, which is the IQ plant, and managed to find one, but Shiki has taken all the IQ plants for his experiments. Sanji and Yusa, P, also at the same village, where everyone appears to have small wings on their arms, learn that Shiki also takes all the men and young women to his royal palace, leaving the village with only the very young and old with strict monitoring around the clock. They soon meet up with Zoro and Chopper. Nami manages to escape her captivity with the help of the bird and finds the thousand sunny. Only moments later, Luffy, being chased by several giant scorpions and a humongous lion, arrives. The bird defeats the scorpions with its electricity, then eats them alongside Luffy, who decides to name the bird Billy. After Nami and Luffy talk about what has happened, they soon decide to search for the others, using Billy to fly. Robin's group, meanwhile, find a large building where many pirates are gathering, similarly protected by poison plants. They learn there that Shiki is planning to let loose the animals on the island into East Blue in a gambit to force the surrender of the world government. They also learn that to prove the power of the animals, he is planning a demonstration using a village on the floating island. Luffy and Nami join the others at the village, and they too learn of the plan from the village residents, who, not knowing where the straw hats originate, are relieved to be rid of the monsters. Straw Hats vs. Shiki confronting the Straw Hats. Nami is seen by a Denden Den Mushi camera, and Shiki decides to personally head over to retrieve her. He arrives sometime later and confronts the Straw Hats who are there. Despite some initial success in fending him off, the Straw Hats are defeated, and Nami is coerced into rejoining Shiki by him agreeing to leave them, and her hometown B. Usopp, the only remaining crew member conscious, tries to stop her, but Shiki knocks him out. Nami records a message using the tone dial, which is supposed to be a farewell message. After leaving it, Shiki's men remove the poisonous plants around the village and cause the animals to destroy it. Xiao and the other villagers took shelter in an underground bunker. Nami watches this from Shiki's palace, apparently uncaring. Robin's group arrives shortly after revive and rejoin the rest of the crew. Xiao reappears and gives them the dial. Her mother, who earlier had expressed relief about the animals being sent to East Blue, apologizes for saying how happy she was for Shiki leaving for East Blue. 
They then play the message, and after hearing only the first bit of it, Luffy is angered to the point that he will not listen to the rest the rest of the crew does, however. Back at Shiki's place, Nami is found to have in fact been attempting to blow up the plants protecting his palace but was overcome by the poison. Shiki traps her near the plants and heads off to meet the pirate captain's gathering. While preparing a Sakazuki ceremony for the unification of the fleet and a toast for the commencement of the operation, the straw hats burst into the palace using Sunny, then march into the main meeting room brandishing various firearms. After a short confrontation, where Shiki calls them simply a suicide squad and reveals hundreds of men around them, Luffy says that Nami was simply the vanguard and that they are the main force. They unload their firearms in the room, defeating most those gathered, then split up to defeat the rest. Luffy chases after Shiki, telling Chopper and Usopp to find Nami. Nami is found by Billy, who helps her ignite the explosives just as Chopper and Usopp find her. While all escape harm from the explosion, animals from outside storm the palace adding to the chaos within. Chopper realizes the only way to save Nami is to find the IQ medicine, but Shiki attempts to stop them. However, Luffy appears in Gear 2 and starts fighting him, with the help of Billy. Asop and Chopper find the IQ plant, but find the medicine is being held by Dr. Indigo. Zoro fights him and using Asura defeats him and retrieves the medicine. Sanji and Brook, meanwhile, witness another of Shiki's henchmen, Scarlet, an ape man, attempting to kiss an earlier incapacitated Robin. Sanji quickly defeats him using Diable Jambi, but Brook ends up receiving Robin's thanks when he catches her. Nami also recovers and feeling a storm approaching has an idea. Luffy, still battling Shiki, is overcome when Shiki surrounds him with water. Shiki then receives a Den Den Mushi call warning of the storm and asking him to redirect the island, which he does. Unknown to him, the call was in fact coerced by Usapan Chopper and that Nami has led them directly into the storm. The various remaining pirates realize this and retreat, while the Straw Hats rig the palace with explosives. Shiki returns to the palace and confronts them, but Luffy also reappears, having recovered. Once more using Gear 3, he places his giant foot into the clouds, gaining an electric charge and uses this to enhance his giant axe. Shiki at first thinks the lightning will kill Luffy, not realizing Luffy's rubber state will protect him. By the time Shiki realizes his mistake, Luffy hits him with the attack, both smashing and electrifying him to the ground, defeating him and destroying an entire island in the process. The other straw hats escape using Thousand Sunny, using Shiki's pirate sail as a parachute. Luffy is recovered by Billy while the villagers are shown flying away using the wings on their arms. Luffy emerges victorious from fight with Shiki. The story ends with the marines gathering below to capture the fleeing pirates, including Shiki, and witnessing the islands crash into the sea, now free of Shiki's power. The sunny is seen in the sky, and they prepare to attack it. Back at marine headquarters, Sengoku comments that the straw hats were the ones to deal with this, and the marines did nothing. Later, it's shown the Straw Hats managed to evade the Marines and continue on with their adventure. Luffy confronts Nami about the message she left on the tone dial, angry that she did not have faith in them. When the others revealed he did not hear the whole message, Nami tries to stop Luffy from playing it, feeling embarrassed of its content. She, Luffy, and Usopp wrestle over the dial Luffy wanting to hear the message, Nami trying to prevent him and throw the dial overboard, and Usopp wanting to keep the dial since it was valuable. As the tone dial is knocked off the ship, it is revealed that on the other half of the message Nami indeed asked them to save her. Later on the islands, it has gotten more peaceful as the animals have lost their aggressive savagery. Meanwhile, Billy is greeting the animals and the people of the village as he flies past them. He lands on a rock and greets Zhao, who is in a flower field, as she waves at the screen. <laughs> Come <laughs> on,